In this lesson, we will examine what makes a compound acidic. Okay, so you've already seen the pKa table, and you have these numbers of the pKa table. You know if you need to solve an acid-base problem to determine whether a reaction happens or not, what you have to do is look at the numbers of the pKa table. But I would be a poor teacher if I just told you, here's the table, here's the numbers, use them. I need to dig a little bit deeper and help you understand why some of these numbers are the way they are. What structural features present in certain molecules makes them more versus less acidic? Okay, so the basic principle, the most basic thing you need to take out of this is a hydrogen will be more acidic if the anion left behind after deprotonation is stabilized by one of the following four factors. Electronegativity of the anionic atom, resonance, inductive effects, or hybridization of the anionic atom, assuming it is a carbon. So we'll look at each of these factors in order, and we will start by looking at electronegativity. So the basic definition of electronegativity is how much does an element want to pull electrons towards itself? So if, it, if you have an element that wants to pull electrons towards itself, that means it's relatively happy having electrons, and a negative charge represents extra electrons. So therefore, electronegative atoms should be happier with a negative charge. It's not strictly the definition of electronegativity, but the same principle applies. Okay, so let's look at some examples here. We're going to look at what I will call the hydrides of the first row elements. So HF, water, H2O, which I'm, for the purposes of this slide, calling HOH, ammonia, HNH2, and methane, HCH3. How acidic are these hydrogens? Well, HF has a pKa of 3.2. That's still considered a weak acid because it is a positive pKa. But compared to everything else on this chart, HF is the strongest acid because fluorine has an electronegativity of 4.0. Water has a pKa of 15.7 because oxygen is the second most electronegative element. Its electronegativity is 3.5, but not as much as 4.0, so water is a weaker acid than HF is. NH3 is a very weak acid. It has a pKa of 38, much, much, much weaker than that of water. The electronegativity of nitrogen is 3.0 as opposed to 3.5. And then finally, methane is not at all acidic. A pKa of 50 means that it's not acidic at all. There is no base known to mankind that is strong enough to remove a hydrogen from methane. And the electronegativity of carbon is 2.5. So you see the trend very clearly from this table. Next factor is resonance. Okay, so acetic acid and ethanol both have an acidic hydrogen on oxygen. But the pKa of acetic acid is 4.74, and the pKa of ethanol is 16. And that's because the conjugate base of acetic acid, the acetate ion, is resonance stabilized. See, there are two resonance structures here where we can put the minus charge on either of the two oxygens and the double bond to the oxygen that's neutral. Whereas ethoxide ion is not resonance stabilized. There is only one structure that I can draw for ethoxide ion. For acetate, each of those oxygens only has to bear half of the negative charge because it's sharing that negative charge with the other one. For ethoxide, that one oxygen has to bear the full negative charge. And the difference between these is 10 pKa units between the one that has resonance and the one that does not have resonance. It becomes even more dramatic when we consider a hydrogen bound to carbon. So acetone has an acidic hydrogen. One of the hydrogens on carbon is weakly acidic, and the pKa of acetone is 
we can use round numbers and call it 20. If we do the same analogy and remove the carbonyl group and replace it with a CH2, we now have a CH2R minus that is not at where that negative charge on oxygen is not at all resonance stabilized. And the pKa of propane is 50 instead of 20. So this is a pKa difference of 30 pKa units as a result of there being another resonance structure available. Now in this case, it's not only the fact that there's another resonance structure available to the enolate, but that is a better resonance structure because you get to put the minus charge on oxygen rather than having the minus charge on carbon. So in this case, you get an extra bonus, which is why the pKa difference is 30 rather than the pKa difference being 10, as we saw in the case of acetate versus ethoxide. The other thing we can draw from this slide is the fact that there is a pKa difference of 15 pKa units between acetone and acetic acid. Okay, look at the difference between acetone and acetic acid that the only difference between the acetate and the enolate is in one of the structures is the minus charge on carbon or is the minus charge on oxygen. In acetate, both of the structures have the minus charge on oxygen. In the enolate, one of the structures has the minus charge on carbon. That difference of electronegativity between carbon at 2.5 and oxygen at 3.5 is responsible for the difference of 15 pKa units in the relative acidities of these compounds. Okay, the next effect is what we call inductive effects. And what an inductive effect means is that a nearby highly electronegative atom, such as fluorine, when you think highly electronegative, you want to think fluorine, can increase the acidity of a hydrogen by pulling electron density away from the anion through bonds. Okay, so we want to consider the fact that trifluoroacetic acid is more acidic than acetic acid by 5 pKa units, pKa of 0 versus a pKa of 4.75. So as indicated in the drawing here, carbon-fluorine bonds are very polar bonds. They're polarized F minus C plus because of the electronegativity of fluorine. So when you have three fluorines on a particular carbon, that's going to leave that carbon somewhat electron deficient. It's going to have a partial positive charge on it. So what does that carbon with a positive charge want to do? It wants to go pull electrons from somewhere else. Well, it's not going to pull the electrons from the fluorine because the fluorine is pulling the electron away from it it's going to go pull electrons from the carbonyl carbon and then that carbon will be left a little electron deficient and it in turn will pull electron density from the anionic oxygen that is two carbons away from the initial carbon that we were talking about. Okay, so the presence of that negative charge on the oxygen that negative charge can be delocalized, so to speak, not by resonance, but through the sigma bonds, onto the slightly electron deficient carbon, carbon that has the three fluorines on it. This is an inductive effect, and it's responsible when you have three fluorines for up to five pKa units of acidity difference. So note that inductive effects are smaller in magnitude than electronegativity or resonance effects. And furthermore, that the strength of the inductive effect depends on the distance between the electronegative atom and the anionic atom. It also depends on how many electronegative atoms there are and how electronegative the atom is. So fluorine gives you the big, biggest bang for the buck Putting three fluorines on a carbon gives you the biggest bang. And in this case, the carbon with the fluorines is as close as possible to the negative charge because you can't have anything bound to a carbonyl carbon or else carbon will form for more than four bonds. So if you have fewer than three fluorines, 
if you have some chlorines instead of fluorines, you'll still have an inductive effect, the effect just won't be so great. The carboxylic acid will be a little bit more acidic than acetic acid will be, however, not quite as acidic as trifluoroacetic acid. The final effect is hybridization. And to look at this, we're going to look at three two-carbon molecules, acetylene with sp hybridization, ethylene with sp2 hybridization, and ethane with sp3 hybridization. So in acetylene, the hydrogen is reasonably acidic. The hydrogen on either of those carbons, doesn't matter which one you pick, they're the same. And these hydrogens have a pKa of 25. Okay, granted, that's still not a strong acid. It's weakly acidic. But there's a big difference between 25 and 44. It's almost 20 pKa units more acidic in the alkyne than it is in the alkene. And then furthermore, the hydrogen in the, on the carbon of the alkene is about 6 pKa units more acidic than in, a, in an alkane. So what's going on here? Well, if you remove a hydrogen from acetylene, you're leaving the negative charge on carbon in an sp hybridized orbital. What that means is that it's 50 that orbital is 50% s character. We know that s orbitals are closer to the nucleus and lower in energy than p orbitals are. So a negative charge in an orbital that has 50% s character is going to have greater stabilization by the positive charge in the nucleus, as opposed to an sp2 orbital, which is only 33% s, or an sp3 orbital, which is 25% s. Okay, so those are the four factors responsible for acidity electronegativity, resonance, inductive effects, and hybridization. The hybridization really only applies to a very small set of molecules, but you can see how the electronegativity and resonance effects cause big differences in pKa's.